Timekeeper. Well, hello, valued guest. I didn't think you'd return to the inn after the last time. Aha! Well, it's another dark and stormy night, which means time for another blood-curling tale. This one is about a psychologist named Carolyn Fern, who heard about a mysterious play that was causing madness in people. She decided to see the play herself, and maybe got in deeper than she wanted to. <laughs> I call this horrifyingly morbid tale. Curtain call. We will be running the entire Carcosa campaign with Carolyn Fern solo. The first scenario, Curtain Call, will be using the following deck. I created this deck to give her def a definite increase in combat capabilities. Uh, she definitely and desperately needs that. Um, her high intellect already makes her decent at investigating, so I only added a few cards to assist in that. And of course, uh, some additional ways to deal free damage like Dynamite Blast. And finally, I added skills that give wild icons uh, that makes it more far more versatile and I do have an upgrade plan which we'll discuss in future episodes this is the token symbol sheet for the scenario so as we see here our goal is to not have three or more horror because those skulls and there are three of them in the bag I believe uh, those skulls are worth a much higher negative modifier if we have more horror. So keeping horror low is definitely the primary goal. Carolyn turns over the folded program in her hand, reading it for what seems like the hundredth time. Miskatonic Playhouse presents The King in Yellow, it reads. A special one-night engagement at Arkham's very own Ward Theater. An irresistible drama in two acts. Production stage and directed by Nigel Engram. The cast is a small ensemble with one unattributed credit at the end. The Stranger. To have such a highly anticipated play come to Arkham all the way from Paris is a noteworthy event, even if it is just for one night. For weeks leading up to the show, it was the talk of the town. It seemed so unassuming. And yet, Carolyn has evidence something sinister is at work. It started with the disappearance of one of the stagehands at the theater, a boy of only 17 who missed rehearsal one night and was never seen again. Then, less than two weeks before the performance, there was a musician whose corpse was found with a gun in his mouth. Perhaps most chilling was the crazed man the coppers had picked up in Independence Square who had been ranting and raving about the King's return. He was brought to Arkham Asylum, and Carolyn was surprised to discover that he was not alone in his delusions. Finding these events suspicious, Carolyn has delved deeper into the matter. Although no connection can be proven, these weren't the only strange events surrounding the up-and-coming play. Instances of suicide and madness have followed in its wake, and Carolyn is just determined to discover why. The lights in the auditorium dim and the spotlight shines on the stage. What unfolds is not quite what Carolyn expected. Slow paced and monotonous, the first act of The King in Yellow is a tedious bore. The setting and characters are compelling, but the meandering and nonsensical story does little to entertain or inform. Carolyn begins to wonder whether the dreadful events surrounding The King in Yellow aren't connected after all. Perhaps it was just Carolyn's overreactive imagination. How could such a trivial and unassuming show cause such pandemonium? She is surprised when the first act closes without any rising action or revelation. The lights rise for the intermission and she considers leaving early, stifling a yawn. Before she's able to decide, however, she finds herself drifting, drifting to sleep. Caroline awakens with a start, as though shaken by an unseen force. She must have slept for quite some time, for there's only a few other patrons in the audience and no performers on stage. The lights are dimmed and the stage curtains are tattered and ripped, though she does not remember that being the case during the first act. Caroline waits a moment before she is sure this isn't part of the, the performance. As she waits, a foul but unrecognizable smell permeates the air. 
How long has she been asleep? Shaking off her drowsiness, Carolyn walks toward one of the seated patrons and asks for the time, but he does not respond. It is then that she realizes that she is speaking to a corpse. The theater is eerily silent. The old wooden floor creaks beneath Carolyn's feet, and a light rain gently patters on the roof as she explores the auditorium. There are more rotting corpses among the seats, and the rest of the crowd has vanished. She pinches herself to see if she's dreaming, and sure enough, Carolyn's skin stings and reddens. She takes a few deep breaths and tries to think rationally. Whatever is going on, she must explore the theater to learn the truth of the matter. All right, and if you've made it this far, it is time to get our basic weakness. So the stack of cards I'm shuffling is the stack of basic weaknesses available to all investigators. And we have pulled Haunted, and I will give a more zoomed in view once the card is pulled. Okay, and uh, it's time to shuffle the deck and pull our opening hand. Uh, to be honest, I did play this scenario and recorded it uh, earlier. Uh, and I lost so miserably that I just didn't want to put that out there. So I am trying again. So this is a attempt number two at the Path to Carcosa with Carolyn Fern playing solo. We'll see how far she can make it. Uh, the trick to this one, I think, is going to be moving fast. I spent too much time setting up my board before, so I think I'm just going to move as quickly as possible and try to avoid enemies as much as I can. Hopefully we don't pull too many enemies. Opening hand, so it looks like we got um, some things to help in fighting, some things to help with damage, and some wild icons. Fearless, I don't think I'm going to need early on, so we'll go ahead and pull. Oh, God. And I pull Fearless anyway, so the mulligan that wasn't a mulligan, no problem. So we'll go ahead and shuffle this hand and uh, get things going. Um, decent starting hand, no assets, but uh, my strategy going into this is doesn't rely on any assets so here we go the theater must have been one hell of an intermission to say that the theater is in disarray would be a profound understatement the walls and seats previously polished to a shine are cracked and caked with dirt the curtains are tattered and the set is stained with old blood you aren't sure what's worse carolyn's not sure what's worse the smell of rot or the nagging feeling that she'd been asleep for a very long time. And since there are no clues in this location, we are going to be moving right away. We need to get this act moved as quickly as possible. Um, no assets to play, so we're going to go ahead and move to the backstage. The set is different than what Carolyn remembers. It's got an unsettling sunset. So this is backstage, there's one clue. When it's revealed, put two of the set aside backstage doorway locations into play at random. While you're backstage, each hidden treachery in your hand counts as three cards instead of one, for the purpose of counting your hand size. All right, so we'll go ahead and get those locations and get them shuffled and put them on uh, in play at random. Hopefully I don't pull too many tough enemies uh, when when I pull from the encounter deck, uh, the, <laughs> the last time I got uh, like three tough enemies in a row and that's really what did me in and I died very, very quickly. So hoping this isn't the case this time around. So two locations um, in play and uh, we're going to go ahead and get that clue right away. Testing four versus three, skulls of minus one. We pick up the clue. All right. One down, two to go. Let's move. So we're going to go ahead and uh, move on to this other backstage doorway location. Okay. A simple wooden door leads to the back of the theater, far from prying eyes of patrons. And this is the dressing room. Oh, damn it. Okay. This uh, has no clues, so it's kind of a waste of time, and you have to spend three actions to heal three horror. The cast dressing room is filled with all manner of costumes and accessories, but it's a tattered yellow robe at the far end of the room that catches Carolyn's attention. It looks too torn and disheveled to be worn, yet it is enticing all the same. 
this uh, is a waste of time, so we're going to have to just move on out of here. We're going to get right back to backstage, and that's Carolyn's first turn. So we'll get a resource and draw a card, and we pull Inquiring Mind. Nice. This is a really good card. So it looks like we have some wild icons to really help us out. We had a Doom to the Agenda, and we draw first encounter card, and it is Whispers in Your Head. Doubt. So it looks like it's a peril hidden, uh, secretly added to your hand. We don't, we're not playing with others, so it doesn't matter. I cannot play events, and I can use two actions to discard it from my hand. Okay. Okay, I'm going to have to get rid of this very quickly, because events like Mind Over Matter and Dynamite Plast are very important in this deck. So I need to get rid of it. All right, but first, let's go ahead and move on to the next room. It looks like it is the rehearsal room. One clue... After you succeed by two or more while investigating the rehearsal room, take one horror. Damn. Okay. As Carolyn enters this room, silently confronting her, is a great symbol torn into the wallpaper. She cannot tell whether the wall was deliberately vandalized or the material faded away or peeled away in the strange pattern on its own. If we get the clue out of here, which with an intellect of four and a shot of one, we should be able to, then we get a victory point, so this is going to be nice. Okay, so this is going to be easy and get us a victory point, so we'll go ahead and get Carolyn over and add a clue, and uh, we'll go ahead and investigate this. This should be easy, it'll be a four versus one, so I think we can get this pretty simple. So here we go, and it is minus one, so that's success. Two clues, two clues, two down, one to go, but we do get a horror because we did discover the clue by two or more. That was a three versus a one. So we'll move her back. And that is the end of her turn. We'll give Carolyn a resource, draw a card. So Dr. Mylon Christopher, okay. This will boost my intellect by one. So this might be helpful. All right. And we have enough resources to play him. We'll add a doom to the agenda and draw our next encounter. And it is a rotting remains. Oh no! A sickening display of gore causes Carolyn to retch. She's glad it wasn't her. Test three, willpower. For each point you fail by, take one horror. Carolyn's walking around the theater and just sees corpses everywhere. This one happens to be rotting and just extremely disturbing. We have to pass this test, even though she has a high uh, threshold for her horror. Um, Carolyn walks around and sees these corpses in this disgusting backstage area. She is not, she is not dealing very well with this. So uh, we're gonna have to gather up some courage. So she's gonna take the initiative and uh, gather up some courage to be fearless. Take the initiative. We'll commit that for three wild icons. It's the beginning of the round, so we get all three, and then she'll also get her fearless on. Uh, which will add another pip. So if she succeeds, she gets to heal a horror. And this will be helpful because she already has one horror. If we fail, seven versus three. Um, hopefully we don't get the auto fail. This should be an easy win here. If we fail, this could really, really hinder the rest of our... All right. And it is an elder sign. That means we heal horror anyways. If we had two horror on us, we would heal both. And we gain a resource because of Carolyn's ability. So that is... Um, Awesome. So beginning of the turn. That's good. So far, no enemies. Um, we're going to go ahead and move to the theater and then to the balcony. So the balcony is um, got one clue. Okay. And oh, I got to actually show it to you guys. So let's go ahead and bring this up. So a carpeted staircase leads up to the balcony, but somehow a huge draft is passing through the passageway. Balcony has one clue, shroud of two. After you perform a move action, during which you move from the balcony to the theater, you take two damage. To Carolyn's disappointment, the balcony sections are much like the ground floor below, although every now and then, she thinks she spots a figure moving silently in the aisles. And it looks like this has another victory point, so if we can get this clue, which again should be easy, it will be very, very helpful for us for the future of the campaign. And if we gather this third clue, this would advance the act deck. So let's do this. Four versus two. Grab this token, and it is a minus one. All right, that is good enough. So 
we get to advance the act deck. Three clues is what is needed. So far, we are moving along very quickly and very nicely as planned. Okay, so his final bow. A shadow creeps along the wall beside Carolyn and her heart leaps into her throat. She turns and a figure fits away just out of sight. Either her mind is playing tricks on her or someone else is in the theater. Carolyn follows the direction of the shadows, rounding a nearby corner. At the far end of the hall, he stands awaiting her. A man in an elegant black suit, his face covered by a pale mask. Though his attire has changed, you instantly recognize him as the actor who played the role of the stranger, one of the characters from The King in Yellow. He turns and disappears through an open doorway, as if taunting you to follow. Choose one of the set-aside locations at random, put that location into play, and spawn the set-aside the man in the pallid mask enemy at that location, instead of his normal spawn location. Advance to one of the three copies of Act 2A at random, remove the other two from the game without looking at them. All right, so we advance the act. Man in the Pallet Mask, hopefully we get one that's near the lobby and not near the backstage. Um, all right, so random act. We don't, they're all the same in the front. It's the back that's different, so we're not gonna know until we flip it. The stranger, the mysterious stranger from the King in Yellow might know something about what happened during the intermission. Carolyn must find and confront him if she is to discover the truth. When the man in the pallid mask would be discarded from play, we advance the act deck. So the random location that the man in the pallid mask is going to start in um, is pulled from all the set-aside locations at random. So we'll just go ahead and grab one and shuffle them up real nice. And okay, so it looks like that's a lobby doorway. Good. That's the direction we are headed. So <laughs> we'll put the man in the pallid mask. He... Um, we can use an action to investigate. He gets plus two shroud to the location for that investigation. But if you succeed, you discard him instead of discovering clues. So for Carolyn, this should be good. She has a high intellect as it is. And because he is tough to fight if you try to fight him. And he's aloof. So to fight him, we'll take an action just to engage. So there he is. He's two locations away. We'll go ahead and um, end our turn get a resource and draw a card so oh nice okay so we get the dynamite blast worst case scenario we dynamite the man in the pallid mask <laughs> we just beat him that way we'll add a doom to the agenda and draw a card and it looks like black stars rise it's an omen revelation test for intellect if you fail you must either place one doom on the current agenda or take one horror for each point you failed by this effect can cause the current agenda to advance. It blotted out entire galaxies with its dark shape. Wow, there's a lot of things that just can give you like three horror in one shot. Um, so four versus four. Um, I don't have too many cards that can help with this. And I don't have any glue clues in the location. So I can't commit the... Um, cards that I have oh okay so minus one so I, that means I fail by one that's not too bad I'll take a horror but that's fine okay so Carolyn is starting to feel strange uh, so we'll go ahead and move over to the lobby we don't take any damage if we move there only if we move to the theater so the lobby through the tall glass doors leading into the lobby Carolyn can see that the room isn't nearly as dilapidated as the auditorium Signs promoting the clean yellow taunt her from inside. Lobby is a four shroud, one clue location. When the lobby is revealed, put two of the set aside lobby doorway locations into play. Can use two actions to draw three cards. Does not seem worth it at all. The wide doors that led to the streets of Arkham are somehow gone, as if they were never there. So, um, we are not going to take them up on the two action offer. This scenario is very time sensitive. So spending two actions is a huge waste just to draw two cards. All right, so we'll put these locations to the side. So now there are three locations connected to the lobby. All three are lobby doorways. King, or the uh, <laughs> man in the pallid mask, is in one of the locations. Uh, we don't need clues to advance the act, so we're not going to look for that clue. We'll use two actions to get rid of this because we do need to play that dynamite if it comes to it. 
So gain a resource, draw a card. And it is haunted. Oh no, our basic weakness. Add it to our threat area. We get minus one to each of our skills and have to spend two actions to discard it. It's not the worst uh, weakness, but uh, for Carolyn, uh, whose stats are kind of low as it is, it does kind of suck. I think in this case, we're going to have to get rid of it pretty quickly. All right, so goes in our threat area, and now we're going to add a Doom to the agenda. Two more, and the agenda advances. Okay, so now we've got uh, encounter card. Spires of Carcosa. It's an omen. Attach to your location, then place two Doom on that location. If there's no Doom, discard the Spires. You can use an action to investigate. If you succeed, instead of discovering clues here, remove one Doom from the attached location. So, with this in play, if we don't clear it this round, the agenda will move next round. Because this already puts it at 6. So, I don't know if it's worth it. Because even if we if we fail twice, then that's it. It's going to advance anyways. Or if we even if we fail, like, getting one of them, then it's going to advance. So, I think we might as well just let the agenda advance. It is what it is. And we'll move forward with our investigation. And try and uh, find information out from this man in the pallid mask. So, we'll head over to the lobby doorway. Um, well, actually first let's uh, let's get rid of this weakness now because uh, we don't want to have that minus one when we're there so go ahead and use two actions to get rid of this weakness and then we'll move to the lobby doorway where the man in the pallid mask is waiting for us okay lobby doorway the wooden doorway okay and then lighting box four shroud one clue while you're in the lighting box increase Resource cost of each card in your hand by two. Oh my god, okay. At the top of a narrow, claustrophobic staircase, Carolyn finds the lighting crew's closet like booth stationed above the balcony. Expansive lighting equipment and several heavy spotlights dominate the cramped room. Okay, this is gonna suck for dynamite blast, it's gonna cost two more, and it's already expensive. Carolyn enters the lighting box room, a darkened room where the man in the pallid mask stands waiting for her. She is now going to find out what is going on with this play. Okay, so we end our turn and we gain a resource. We have a ton of them, but we're going to need them. <laughs> and we draw a card and it's foolishness. Uh... I don't know that I have time to work foolishness at this late in the game, in the scenario, so uh, he is going to benefit us with two wild icons. I am pretty sure of this. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know if we can get Mylon Christopher in play to help us anymore, but we may have to with the shroud being plus two to investigate this guy. So here we go. Agenda advances, and um, we add three three or we take the three from the current agenda we take the two from the spires because we are adding one more so that puts it at six so agenda advances and we go to agenda number two abruptly the malformed body of an unnatural nightmare slams onto the stage its slithering tendrils reaching into the aisles it opens its maw and lets out a shrill piercing song the melody is uncanny the notes sear into carolyn's mind pain pounds in her forehead and blood runs from her ears set search all the set aside cards in the victory display for the royal emissary enemy and spawn it in the theater Oh boy, some nasty stuff is coming to us. So now, the new agenda. Encore. The creature's song echoes relentlessly throughout the halls of the theater. The melody repeats again and again, yet somehow, never the same note twice. Forced, after Royal Emissary is added to the victory display, remove all doom from play and reset the agenda deck to Agenda 1A. Then place three doom on that agenda so he will come back three rounds after we kill him is what this means okay and we have six uh rounds before this advances so i, I think we're going to be okay the hard part is killing this thing because it is a doozy here it is 
the Royal Emissary, 4 Combat, 4 Health, 2 Evade, and Massive Hunter Retaliate. At the end of the enemy phase, each Investigator at Royal Emissary's location or a connecting location takes one horror, but he is worth 2 victory points. And when he hits, he hits hard. He hits for 2. So 3 hits from this guy and we're dead. So let's see how this goes. Man, he's ugly. Alright. So he arrives at the theater. Which means uh, we have um, two rounds before he reaches us. But next round, he'll deal horror to us because we'll be in a connecting location. Okay, so we need to get this man in the pallid mask as soon as possible so we can deal with this guy. Alright, encounter card, twisted to his will. If there's no doom in play, it gains surge. That's all we care about because there's no doom in play. So if this is going to gain surge, we'll have to draw a different card. Throw that away, and then we'll grab a different card. So this is a fanatic. Oh my god. Okay. Three combat, two health, three evade, spawn, reveal location with the most clues. After he enters play, move one clue from his location to him. When you defeat him, take control of all his clues. Um, okay. I mean, he doesn't hunt. But I don't want him in the lobby. We'll put him in with us. We get to pick because each of them has one clue and they're both revealed locations. So we'll pick our location. I think it might be easier to deal with him here than in the lobby when the Royal Emissary arrives there. We'll probably have to move there and fight him in the lobby. So we'll, we'll kill this guy now and get our clue back. Um, and then we'll have to deal with the man in the pallet mask afterwards. So... Here we go, we're gonna spend some money because this location makes every card two resources more expensive than normal. So we're gonna spend three resources to play a cost one card and three more, there we go, to play another cost one card. So first card is Mind Over Matter fast play only during your turn until the end of the round you may use your intellect in place of your combat and agility this will help us hit him more consistently we'll get to kill him right away but just to make sure nothing goes wrong i'm also going to play anatomical diagrams fast play during any investigator's turn if i have five or more remaining sanity which i do choose a non-elite enemy and they get minus two fight and minus two evade so this guy is going to a combat of one and uh, getting to use my intellect, it'll be a four versus one. So this is going to ensure that we kill this guy quickly. All right, so um, let's attack with our fist. We're going to punch him. Carolyn's going to punch this lunatic in the face. Minus four. Oh, my gosh. That does not hit. So let's try again. Come on. Zero. Okay, that's good. Boom. Carolyn punches him across the jaw nearly breaking it she swings again and this time punches him in the stomach doing him in he vomits blood and passes out carolyn then learns some information from the contents of his pocket and gets a clue but that is the end of her turn so that took three actions to kill this guy that throws my plans into a and now this creepy thing is lurking in the shadows it moves to the lobby and Carolyn hears its nasty song. She is horrified and therefore gains a horror. He is coming for us. Okay, flip her, we gain a resource, and we draw a card. And it is a painkillers. Maybe it'll come in handy, we'll see. Uh, right now, we are kind of in a pickle. We need to get this man in the pallid mask defeated before this thing comes and attacks us okay so I think um, we'll add, oh yeah we gotta grab an encounter card first okay so spirits torment attached to your location after you leave attached location you must either take one heart or lose one action you can get rid of this with an action you place one of your clues on the attached location this actually is more of a gift <laughs> because um, 
we have a card that requires us to have a clue in the location in order to play it and gain three wild icons. So I think that this is going to be something that helps us in the long run. It will take an action to, to do it, but to drop the clue down, but I think this is a good move. So let's do that. Uh, we'll, uh, oh yeah, we got to dynamite this guy. So um, we'll gain a resource. Sweet Ben went action doing that. And that's seven resources. That's everything. She is going broke. She lights a stick of dynamite and throws it into the lobby, dealing three damage to this creature, nearly killing it. But it's still alive, bleeding, leading a trail of blood across the lobby of the theater. Okay. So that's a big success. No check. Three free damage. Very nice. Now, uh, we'll have to get this man in the pallid mask. Um, seven versus a uh, six? No, hold on. Um, let's drop the clue. We're going to have to drop the clue using the ability on this card, and that'll be our final action. So we'll have to drop the clue. That way, we can use um, that card that we have. Otherwise, we're going to risk wasting turns on this. All right, Carolyn's turn ends. Let's go ahead and um, move this creature to us. And uh, he's going to attack us, dealing two damage. And then his song pierces our ears, dealing another horror. So we are now at three horror. This is bad because now skulls are going to be worth minus three instead of minus one. And there are three skulls in the bag. So <laughs> this is not good. Um, gain a resource, draw a card. All right, another inquiring mind. So having that clue in the location, we have two inquiring minds. That's two cards that will give us three wild icons each. So that's going to be pretty awesome. So we get to commit this to a test only if there's a clue in our location, which it is now, uh, and we'll get three wild icons. So let's see what happens. All right, so those two, commit those. So that's an eight to attack um, four. So I think we're going to be able to hit them because even with a minus four from the special tokens, a zero, nice. You are dead. Kellen is able to punch this creature into submission it is dead it is a dead all right so he gets to um she'll we'll go ahead and investigate this guy and his the shroud of the location we had two because of his ability so i think we're gonna have to commit some cards i don't have enough resources to bring out mylon christopher and he would cost two extra anyways we may just have to commit cards and hope for the best here. We'll commit Foolishness for two Wild Icons. Give me a seven versus a six. I'm sorry, a six versus a six. So let's go, let's go. Six versus six, six versus six, six versus six. Come on. Wait. Uh, let's... Um, um, oh yeah, we're supposed to move this. Let's do this before we forget. We killed the Royal Emissary, so the Doom goes away, the agenda flips back to Agenda 1A, and we add three Doom to the current agenda. So we have three rounds before this thing comes back. All right, we've committed foolishness, and I think uh, we'll just go six versus six, and we draw, hey, Elder Sign! We get to heal horror. So this is not just good because we get a resource, but the skulls are now back to being a minus one instead of a minus three. There's a huge help. All right. As Carolyn faces off with the stranger, she gets the sense that he is grinning beneath his fail, pale faceless mask. Where is everyone? She asks, but he does not respond. What is going on? He remains silent and steps back as she approaches until his back is against the corner of the room 
Inexplicably, he continues to back away, and his body melds into the wall behind him, erupting from where he stood is a growing mass of viscous ooze. Instead of discarding the man in the pallid mask, move him to the lobby. Add two tablet tokens to the chaos bag. Place one horror on the location the man in the pallid mask was moved from. Until the end of the scenario, horror on locations represents advancing ooze. Each location with horror gains force. After you leave this location, test for agility. If you fail, take one horror and one damage. Keep this card as a reminder. Okay. So we're very close to finishing this so now he goes to the lobby um the act advances curtain call the stranger must know the way out we have to follow him while well, the man in the pallid mask is not in play the lobby gains resign as an action force at the end of the round place one horror on each location with no horror that is connected to a location with horror okay and if we resign we advance the act that is fine by me. Carolyn has experienced quite the ordeal in this theater. She got more than she bargained for and is in deeper than she ever expected. The man in the pallid mask goes through the wall and ends up in the lobby. Carolyn hears him. First, she must investigate. Four versus four. We need to get this clue because this location is worth a victory point. Okay. There we go. Plus one. Okay, so we get this clue. Wow, we are getting some lucky chaos bag pulls. This could end disastrously with the wrong pull. So there we go. And now we gain a resource. Um, add a doom to the agenda. Your card. I know I'm doing this out of order. Okay, so that'll help us fight. Uh, and now the encounter card. So it looks like Descent into Madness. If you have at least three horror, which we don't. So this gains Surge. The King's Edict uh, for each cultist enemy. And it says gain, it gains Surge if there's no cultists, which there are not. And Poltergeist. Oh boy. Okay. Well, this adds, it throws a little wrench into the plan. I was not hoping for enemies right now. We have two rounds before that thing comes back. Alright, so four versus three. Um... I mean, it's a, it's a tough, tough test, um, but remember the skulls are still only worth minus one, so our chance is actually fairly decent, and it's a skull, so that is only a minus one, so he takes a damage, and now we will try again to parlay with this guy, spirit, please, minus two, that's not, that's not good enough, um, we can't afford to not get him this round because he'll deal horror to us skull yes he is gone oh that was lucky that was super lucky if he'd stayed one more round then he would have dealt too horror to us which you know we have nine so that's fine but then that would put us past the threshold of the skulls and they would be worth a minus three then so i'm glad we were able to kill him this round that was a very good lucky pull resource card Yes, okay, take the initiative. So this gives us three wild icons on our first action, if we use it on our first action. So we are at five doom. We need to do this now. Whispers in your head, anxiety. So Carolyn starts hearing some whispers in her head and she starts getting very anxious and can't play fast abilities. That's not a problem. I, I don't think I need to get rid of this, to be honest. Um, this is not that debilitating right now. I don't have any assets down. There are no locations with fast abilities. We're, fi we're fine. Let's just go get this guy. So we move in to the man in the pallid mask. And uh, let's go ahead and commit. So we need to investigate. Uh, so it's second action. So I get two from take the initiative. And one because I'm committing Mylon Christopher. So... Um, Mylon Christopher, so that gives us three, so that's a se uh, s eight, no, uh, seven, seven versus six, uh, yeah, seven, seven versus uh, six, so we're up one, 
we've been getting some really lucky chaos bag pulls if we do this i think we win um I'm dreading the tentacle because I think that this might be the time we get it. And it's an Elder Sign. All right. There we go. We heal horror. Gain a resource. And the pallid man in the pallid mask is away. Okay. So we defeated the man in the pallid mask. Uh, the act says that we can um, resign as an action. So we will do that. The stranger gives Carolyn a slight bow as he steps through the lobby's front entrance, opening a glass door that was not there a moment before. A sudden cacophony of noise erupts around her, and she fears that the building has only seconds before it's destroyed. She flees, crashing through the front doors and leaving the ruined theater in her wake. Several blocks away, she takes a moment to rest and think about what she has witnessed. Okay, so now we have to decide. Do we warn the police, or do we try to solve the mystery on our own i think carolyn is a very rational individual and she will try and convince the police so carolyn will warn the police so that would be r1 fleeing from the theater carolyn heads straight to the police station in east town bursting through the door to the stairs of onlookers and police officers alike she demands to see sheriff engel stressing the importance of her visit the desk sergeant, who is lazily working through a stack of paperwork, shakes his head and raises a finger in silence, then points to a nearby chair. The wait is excruciating. Every moment is an eternity. The hands of the nearby clock crawl. Carolyn drums her fingers on the desk. She taps her feet. She constantly peers over her shoulder to make sure the pallid mask of the stranger is not watching her through the front window. Finally, the desk sergeant puts his pen down and sits up, beckoning her. All right, what's so important now? She's only halfway through her explanation of the night's events when he sighs and shakes his head. Look, if this is some kind of joke, it ain't funny, he says. We had officers downtown all night. Don't try to feed me some hooey straight to my face. Carolyn insists, but the desk sergeant rises to his feet and opens the door, motioning for her to leave. He raises his voice. What? You think we're not busy enough or something? Beat it! He mumbles about blind birds behind Carolyn's back as he escorts her out of the station. Carolyn knows what she saw earlier that night. Frustrated, she heads back to the ward theater to find some kind of proof that she can take to the police. She is surprised to find that the front door of the theater is locked. She's about to decide whether or not to break down the door when she sees a notice on the wall near the entrance. Don't be a wet blanket. Come to the King in Yellow cast party. 8 p.m. at the home of Constance Dumaine, 1452 Atlantic Avenue. Formal dress only. She tears the notice from the wall and folds it into her coat pocket, hoping it will lead her to the answers she seeks. All right, so we were victorious due to some very good luck. I mean, I, I can't even begin <laughs> to say uh, the luck on this is phenomenal. So let's add up our victory one two uh three um and then the creature so that's five so it looks like we get to take home five experience points to boost our deck for the next one it looks like carolyn now knows what all the hubbub was about <laughs> And now, she's getting well-dressed so she can go to a party at 1452. Atlantic. I'm sure the party will be quite a blast. A dynamite blast. Ho -ho. Well, try to get some sleep. Until the next time.